Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. This tutorial works alongside the leather purse tutorial to help you create one of these frill purses. I would recommend that you watch the plain purse first because I go through all of the details in that tutorial. In this tutorial, we're simply going to be looking at the differences. So what's different about creating the frill purse as well as looking at the template sizes that you're going to need. So gather up your supplies and we can get started. For the frill purse, you're going to need to cut out the following. I recommend that you save or write down the details on this table so that you can refer back to it during the tutorial. Now please note again that the metric to imperial measurements aren't converted, so they're not accurate conversions. Instead, I designed the purse in inches and in centimetres, so please stick to inches or centimetres throughout the process. Hopefully you've cut out all the pieces that you need for the frill purse. Let's quickly go over everything that you need and which pieces need to be interfaced. So for the main body of your purse or bag, you're going to have two pieces for the front and one piece for the back. Let's start with the back measurements. This will measure six and a quarter inches wide, 14.6 centimetres, and four and a half inches high, 11.5 centimetres. The back piece is plain and needs to be interfaced. Now the front piece comes in two sections so that we can insert the frill. You're going to have the top half. The top section measures six and a quarter inches wide, one and three quarter inches high. In centimetres, that's 14.6 centimetres wide by 4.5 centimetres high. Then you're going to have a bottom section of the bag at the front, and this is going to measure six and a quarter inches wide, 14.6 centimetres, by three and three quarter inches high, 9.5 centimetres. Both of these sections, the top and the bottom half of the front, will need to be interfaced. Just like with the plain bag, you're also going to need two tabs. The tabs are not going to be interfaced and they need to measure an inch and a half wide, which is 3.5 centimetres, by one inch high, two centimetres. And you're going to need two of those. Finally, for this specific frill purse tutorial, you're also going to need a longer piece of leather that's going to become the frill. The frill is going to measure nine and a quarter inches, 22 centimetres, and that's the width. The height of the frill is going to be one and three quarters of an inch, which is 4.5 centimetres. The frill does not need to be interfaced, and you also need to make sure with the frill, but also with the two tabs, that you trim off any of the pen around the outside of it, so that it, that's not going to be visible, because the raw edge of the leather is going to be on display here. If you're working with a fabric that frays, you will need to finish the bottom edge of the frill. You'll see as the tutorial continues. And if you are working with a fabric that frays, I'd probably recommend watching the whole tutorial first, and then you can see the bits that you'll need to amend with your fabric. As always, you're also going to need a zip, and the zip for the size bag that we're working with here is 10 centimeters or four inches. Now we're going to start by gathering the frill piece and the frill is going to fit in between the top and bottom half of the front of the bag. The frill's going in here. So we're going to create a gathering stitch on the sewing machine. That's a stitch length of four millimeters or longer. And we're going to do that along the top edge of the frill. Now, when I say the top edge, I mean, if you're working with a fabric that has a nap, or that has a pattern, you want to make sure that the nap is going downwards here, or the pattern is going downwards. So we're doing it along the top edge of the pattern. You want to do it in the seam allowance. So the seam allowances of the whole of these projects are a half an inch or one centimeter. So we're going to do the gathering stitch a quarter of an inch, five mil, from the edge of your fabric. Just something to point out here so that you understand the pattern. The frill is three inches or 7.4 centimeters wider 
than the width of the front of the purse. So when we gather this, that's how much fabric or leather you're going to need to shrink so that the frill fits into the gap here between the top half and the bottom half of the front of the purse. So let's go to the sewing machine and I can show you how we're going to gather this. So we're going to stitch along the top edge of the frill piece and we're doing that a quarter of an inch, five mil from the edge and we're doing a large stitch length of four millimetres or longer. I would probably recommend that you use a walking fit for this if you have it, purely because you'll find that the leather will feed through the sewing machine more easily. Otherwise you could use some layers of stabiliser, something like a tearaway stabiliser, if you found that your machine was struggling. You're not going to backstitch at the start and the end because we need to leave nice long tails. Now I recommend that you complete another row of stitching in between the first row and the edge of the fabric and this will help to provide what's called an even gather. Now you can start gathering the frill. You're going to pick two of the threads, it doesn't matter if it's the two threads from the front or the two threads from the back but you need to pick the two threads from the same size. You're simply going to pull on these and you ideally want to have left these quite long if you've managed to do that. And then you're going to push the fabric or the leather away. Now you will find this more difficult with leather, but you should still be able to achieve it and just move it ever so slowly along the threads. And you can see that it's gathering that up there. Now I recommend that you do a bit from one side and a bit from the other side. So at the other side, again, you're going to grab the two threads either from the front or from the back. And then we're going to pull on those to again gather the fabric. Now you want to keep gathering your frill until the width of the frill is the same as the width of the top half or bottom half of the front of your purse or bag. And if you remember, that should be six and a quarter inches or 14.6 centimeters. Now, mine is actually pretty close, if anything, a little bit too short, so I'm going to have to let a bit out. And all I would do then is just push the fabric back towards the threads, and that will let a little bit out. Once you're happy that you have got the width correct, I recommend then that you want to try and go along and make sure that you've got a real even gather or even frill effect. So you're just going to want to use your sort of thumb and forefinger and just move the frills along so that it's really evenly distributed the gathering. So I've now gathered my frill and distributed the fullness so that I've got a nice finish. I'm now going to stitch this onto one side of the front of my purse first. I would recommend that you attach it onto the bottom piece first because I think you'll probably find it easier. So we're going to take the frill and we're going to position that onto this is the bottom front piece. Make sure that if you have a pattern or a nap that it's going down so that we're attaching the frill onto the top of it. And we're going to match up the edges of the frill with the edge of the bottom front piece. So that's both side edges and the top edge. And we're going to use the Wonder Clips or the Bulldog Clips to hold that in place. Now, if you find you need to sort of distribute the frill at all here, please feel free to do that until you're happy with it. We're then going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along this top edge, but we're going to stitch in the seam allowance. This is just to hold it in place before we also introduce the top front. So I recommend that you stitch approximately a quarter of an inch or five millimeters away from the edge of the fabric. Join me at the sewing machine and I'll show you what we do here. We're now going to attach the frill onto the bottom part of the purse. You want to stitch approximately a quarter of an inch or five millimetres away from the edge so that it's in the seam allowance. And you can just do a normal stitch length for this. So this can be a 2.5 mil stitch length. And this is to hold it in place before we attach the top part. Again, walking foot is a great addition here so that it doesn't move too much if you have one. I'm just trying to hold it in place and not let the leather slide. 
Now if you've seen the main tutorial for this, I do talk about using some double sided basting tape, which you could use here, you just would have to make sure that it would only be in the seam allowance, so that you wouldn't see it afterwards. And backstitch at the other end, try and keep the sort of tails for the gathering out of the way as well. Now I've attached the frill to the bottom half of the purse or bag and I've trimmed the threads. The next step is to attach the top half of the purse. We're going to be attaching that in this area here. So the top of the bag is still up on this edge, which means if you've got a pattern or if you've got any nap to your fabric, it needs to be going down in this direction. So this is where the zip's going to be going in and this seam is going to be attaching to the top of the frill. To do that, you're simply going to fold it over so that you've got the right sides together. So the right side of the frill goes to the right side of the top of the bag. And you can see if I hold it back like that, that's what we're aiming for when we're finished. So for this, we're simply going to match up the edges of the fabric, and that should be the edge of the top half of the bag, the bottom half of the bag, and the frill and we are going to hold that in place with our Wonder Clips or Bulldog Clips. And as I mentioned a second ago, you could use the double-sided basting tape for this if you wanted to. You just would need to make sure that it was only in the seam allowance, so it didn't step out of the seam allowance because otherwise you would be left with a sort of sticky residue on the right side of your bag. We're now going to go to the sewing machine again and we're going to stitch along here but this time we're going to be following our seam allowance, so the half an inch or one centimetre seam allowance. So now we're going to be sewing through three layers of fabric, the top front, the frill and the bottom front. Follow the seam allowance of half an inch or one centimetre, use a normal stitch length of 2.5 millimetres and backstitch at the start and at the end and you're just going to feed this through the machine like so. So hopefully you can see that I've just stitched along here to attach the frill and the top front and the bottom front together. Now the seam allowances are going to go up towards the top front piece, so from the back it's going to look like this, and that's to allow the frill to stay in the correct position. By all means you're welcome to give that a press if your fabric allows, or you can use a roller with your leather to try and get that to sit nice and flat. Now depending on the thickness of your leather, you may find that the seam allowances are quite bulky, so you may want to trim these down. If you decide that that's necessary and you want to do some trimming, I would recommend that you grade them, which means that you need to trim them to a different length, so you're staggering the three different seam allowances. Now the rule with grading is that the seam allowance that's closest to the front of the finished item needs to be the largest seam allowance. So that's going to be the seam allowance of the front top. That one's closest, so that can be the largest, so I probably would leave that one as it is. And working my way back, the frill can be smaller and the smallest one can be the front bottom. So I would probably take the pair of them, so I'm going to cut the frill and the front bottom down to approximately half, say a quarter of an inch, five millimetres, just like so. And then if you think that that's still too bulky, so you need to stagger all three of them to a different length, then you would trim down the one that's furthest away from the front, so that's the bottom front, and I would trim that one down to smaller again, so say half the distance again, so that would be approximately one eighth or three millimetres. And hopefully you can see the difference in the seam allowances now, and as I mentioned, if we were to turn this to the right side, the seam allowance that's closest to the right side is the largest, the others are all staggered behind. Just a little note here about the basting or tacking stitches that we did and the easing or gathering stitches. Now you don't have to remove those if you don't want to, but you'll probably find, like I did, that I actually ended up trimming some of those off. So actually they have been removed, removed simply by my grading or trimming. Now I'm going to presume that you have been able to watch the main tutorial for the series and you feel comfortable attaching the tabs to both ends of the zip. 
If you don't, then I'll pop a link to that in the description box below. The main tutorial shows you how to create a plain purse and covers all the nitty gritty details of sewing with leather and the basic construction techniques used for these bags or purses. Once your zip is ready, we will then begin attaching both the front, which has now got the frill in it, and the back, which is still plain, pieces onto the zip. Now, what I would like you to think about here is which way you want the zip to open. Now, I'm going to imagine that this is the front of our bag. You will probably, if you're right-handed, want the zip to open like it's sitting there towards the right and close towards the left. So, if that's the case, this side of the bag is going to want to be positioned onto this side of the zip. So to do that, I could simply flip that over if I wanted to. So we've got the right side of the fabric onto the right side of the zip. We're going to match the top edge of the fabric here with the top edge of the zip. If the tabs step over or are larger than that, don't worry about them. You also want to make sure that the zip is in the center. You should have five eighths of an inch if you're working in inches, or 1.3 centimeters if you're working in centimeters between the edge or the end of the tab on the zip and the edge of the fabric. So the top edge of my fabric is flush with the edge of my zip. The tabs stick out a bit, that's not a problem. The zip or the tabs are both central. So if I were to turn this back, we're going to have a really nice finish to the zip. And we made sure that the zip would be opening with the front of the purse or the bag looking at us in the correct direction. So I'm now going to leave you to stitch along here, close to the zip, and then to fold back and do your top stitching. It's exactly the same process that you will have completed with the plain purse. If you haven't done that, as I said, the link to that is in the description box below. Once you have done the first side, you then will complete the same with the back. Just making sure, like we did with the plain purse, that when you're attaching this onto the other side, the nap is going down or the pattern is going down in the right direction. Once you've sewn both sides of this onto the zip and you've top stitched it, meet me back here and I'll go through how to actually sew up the bag. So as you can see here, I've attached both sides and I've top stitched both sides onto the top of the zip. So the next step is going to be to open the zipper. Perhaps not all the way, but at least some of the way. We're going to need that when we actually have to turn this around afterwards. We want to sew the bag together now. So we're going to take the back and we're going to position that right side together onto the front, just like so. Now, we want to match up all of the exterior edges. So the side edges, the bottom edge, and the other side edge. Now this is the same technique as we used in the plain purse. I would recommend starting at the top edge here, back stitching almost sewing on and off to make sure that these two bits are one on top of each other and correct. Stitch down to the bottom. You would then, then do the same on the other side, down to the bottom, and then you would go across the bottom. Now the reason why we don't go down around the bottom and back up the other side is because you will probably find that when you get to this edge, that you get some slip and they don't match up properly. And it just doesn't look good when you turn this around. But because we're going to need to trim some of the seam allowances down, I would like you to make sure that you backstitch. So you stitch down here, but you backstitch for at least the seam allowance that you're gonna be sewing across the bottom edge. So that when we actually cut off the corners and trim this all down, we're not going to be left with weak seams. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you perhaps could sew down here to the corner, turn the corner and sew into the middle. You could do the same on this side then, starting at the top to make sure we don't get any slip, stitch down to the corner and into the middle. So I'm going to show you this technique now. If you prefer to do them all as straight edges, then by all means do that and follow the plain purse tutorial. So pin all of the side edges and the bottom edge together. You want to make sure that you've caught the frill in both side edges. If it's stepping out a little bit and it wants to be that way, that's absolutely fine, it doesn't matter. But you want to make sure that you've caught it, and I have done. 
Now another tip you might find useful is to mark on the corner at the bottom here. I'm going to measure my seam allowance of half an inch or one centimeter and put a little marking with a pen or some chalk. And I'm gonna do that from the bottom and from the side. Move my clip if I need to. So I've ended up with a little corner. As I'm stitching down, I'll head for that. My needle will go in in the corner, I'll lift the foot and I'll stitch along the bottom to the middle. Now you will probably find that you have to use a zipper foot for this because you won't be able to use any other foot to stitch the seam allowance that's required close to the zipper tab up here. However, if you find that you're struggling by using the zipper foot all the way around, then by all means stitch the top part with the zipper foot and then change to a walking foot for an easier result. So start stitching at the top. I've got my zipper foot on. If you're following the guidelines on your sewing machine, remember that your needle needs to be in the centre or in the position that it is for those to be correct. You're then going to continue stitching down following the half inch or one centimetre seam allowance. Just make sure that the seam allowances on the other side or wherever they are for the frill are in the going in the right direction and that you've also caught the frill and both layers on this edge. And we're aiming for the little drawing of the corner at the bottom here. When you get to the corner, then you can position the needle into the fabric lift the foot and turn and you're going to work your way now to the middle of the bag at the bottom sewing the same seam allowance and we're doing this with a 2.5 mil stitch length if you think your bag is going to take a lot of weight or strain then perhaps you would like to sew it at smaller stitch length 1.5 millimeters you're welcome to turn down to 1.5 mil for the corner or you're also welcome to sew over yourself if you want to to make it really secure now i've got to the middle of the bottom and i've backstitched to secure it there now i'd like you to do exactly the same on the other side and stitch over yourself when you get back to meet at the centre bottom here. Now as you can see I have stitched around the bag or purse. The next step is going to be to trim it down the seam allowances like I've started doing here and to cut off the corners and then to turn the bag through the opening of the zip. All of this is covered in the plain purse tutorial so I'm not going to cover it again now. One thing you might want to do with the frill purse is you might want to turn it around to the right side first and just double check that you've caught the frill in between the two layers, the front and the back. And you can obviously check for any other things when you're doing that as well. If you're happy with how it looks from the right side, then by all means you can trim, cut and then turn around. I'll join you back here when you've done that. And here we have it, your finished frill purse or bag. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned some new techniques for sewing with leather and creating this unique design. If you want to make the bow purse or the plain purse, then I'll pop links to the corresponding tutorials in the description box below. I'll also put a link with a blog post on how to actually make your own size pattern so that you can make a different size to what I've created here. Thanks for watching and good luck with your sewing.